one wasn't ready. Okay, listen, there's a lot going on in my life at the moment, lady. Ready to partake in your first discussion video? We'll see how this goes. We're gonna have a shit ton of nonsense. I already feel this going really badly. <laughs> We've got a time limit though. I was just about to say hello. Welcome oh. back to my channel. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing really, really well. I mentioned in. Oh my god, here the. We go. I'm not gonna do my normal intro because it'll just send her into a spiral. So this Honestly, is fuck is oh. bringing me back to Kentucky. <laughs> the minute that we said we were overtired, my camera died and the screen said battery exhausted. <laughs> now we're gonna look high. <laughs> Even though it's legal in Canada, I promise we're oh, not. Oh yeah. <laughs> we're not in Canada. <laughs> Maybe we weren't overtired. We kept justifying that because we were really tired. I mentioned in my last video that even though I'm not gonna be doing a lot of writing videos or any writing videos over the next like five or six weeks, that I was going to be trying to film some discussion videos and we're actually going to do something today, which is really exciting. This video is gonna go up first because I'm gonna like oh. it out. Okay, so can't tell um, ya. <laughs> so, but we're going and we're both going to be riding. We're going. <laughs> but it's, a little but bit. safely. <laughs> yeah. Don't no helmet needed. <laughs> we don't need helmets. So hopefully that gives you a hint. It probably doesn't. But Wait. <laughs> I feel like this is so chaotic. <laughs> Saying we we're riding, but we don't need a helmet sounds a little weird. <laughs> We have an appointment at this place. Ride one of those like sit poor simulators, okay? <laughs> That's gonna be the next video. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Baby, shut this up. This is going well. We are already four minutes in and I haven't even introduced oh, yeah, the sorry. topic of the video. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just gonna scooch in right here if you don't mind. <laughs> Scoot your way in, why don't you? Okay, so for those who don't know this lovely hobbit, this is Natalie. She is my what do I classify you as? The internet friend? Turned real life friend, I guess. That's my title. <laughs> <laughs> she is one of my best friends, and we met through Instagram about two years ago. 2021, yeah. I think. In 2022, we met up at Grand Prix Show Jumping, and then that December, she came out and met Merlin, and then three, four months later, we're like, let's go on a 15 hour road trip together. Any Third time there? we ever hung out, we went on a 15 hour road trip together <laughs> to the 2023 Land Rover Kentucky three day event. And since then, we have done a shit ton of stuff together. <laughs> she has been in a crap ton of videos on my channel. She's pretty much the only other person who's ever been in videos because she's also this one. a fellow internet person, and I don't feel awkward yeah. asking her to be in this with me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I promise that I didn't pressure her into doing this. And hopefully she threatened me <laughs> at gunpoint. <laughs> she said that so casually. The only reason I'm doing this is for Caitlin's mom. She seems to like me in videos, so. Hi, mom. Hi, Caitlin's mom. <laughs> this is kind of a follow-up to the video that I did a few months ago about like whether I'm doing positive reinforcement anymore. Yeah. Wow, I need to dust. Anyways, <laughs> in that video, I talked about a lot of different things, but one of the main things that I talked about was how I really have been leaning on people around me to riff ideas off of and things like that, and that I've found a really lovely support network in the last few years. This video is going to be about the importance of like-minded me. Horsey friends. <laughs> this Natalie. video is about me. I guess the background that's important to note is that how many hours of voice notes do you think that we've sent to each other? Or that we send like per week? Mm, probably like a good five hours. Yeah, honestly. Cause Every I'll time we go to the barn. Yeah, and it's not just like a one or two minute voice note. Like. <laughs> It's <laughs> probably gone up to like 20 minutes. I find it really beneficial to have oh. someone who knows what's going on and knows Merlin, but is kind of on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, for now. Mm. And, and are you? we have very similar ideas about horsemanship and the way we work with horses, even though we don't always use the same methods, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, I don't think there's ever been a time where we have butted heads or disagree hugely on anything. No. We've had plenty of time to disagree because we talked the entire 14 hours. Uh -huh of the trip, the drive down, and basically the whole way back, all about different horse things. Yeah. And neither of us had anything where we were like, mm, no, I wouldn't do that. For me, there's a huge benefit in that because when you grew up 
learning traditional, maybe more like, I don't wanna say rough, but like, just the bylaw car, it just drove by, so I'm good. Yeah, you're fine, I told you, it's free parking, <laughs> free parking on the I know, weekend. I just worried, because you got me scared that I was parked somewhere bad. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> Caitlin told me to parallel park. Okay, oh like, my are god. You, me? you see, that's not parallel parking. That would be in the middle. That's parallel parking, I'd have to- Yes, but you could just me. pull in. Mm -hmm. I don't trust myself. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, next. <laughs> We were going. We were going on such a We were a good really good. Oh, okay. sorry. Now I forget what ADHD. We were don't worry. About. <laughs> when we left on that trip, we had only really hung out twice, and we were still kind of getting to know each other. And even though we had been like internet friends for like mm -hmm. over a year, we realized how similar we are in a lot of ways. There's a lot of benefits and positives to that for me because I think when you're going through a change in horsemanship, this is where the, the good ideas come from. Remember mm -hmm. I said when we get talking, good things, you know, I love this, this is where this comes in. When you're going through a change in horsemanship, it can be a very isolating experience. And I know mm -hmm. that like that's something that I've seen a lot of people who talk about switching to like something like positive reinforcement, just different ways beyond the traditional. It can be a very isolating experience and having someone that you're able to go to and be like, am I insane or is this mm -hmm. a good thing? Or is this yeah. thing that's going on a bad thing? Or yeah. is this post that I saw on Instagram, am I blind or is this mm -hmm. not it? What have been some benefits for you of having, well, and not just me, like other people that I know that you're friends with. I have a problem child of a horse and <laughs> you <do>. it, <laughs> sorry, poor Bessie. It's very entertaining sometimes, but also I write down very amazing notes. Like I'm a notes queen and Equilab everywhere. Equilab, I put like, if I see him drink, if I see him poop that day, like every little thing that I see. Also, brief pause. If you want 35% off the love premium, you can use Caitlin. Code Caitlin35. So from the continue. There's the plug. So I keep notes, but sometimes going back in your notes and being like, is this something that happened a few days ago? I don't remember. So when I'm telling Caitlin, like we do this thing now where we literally, every time we go to the barn, we send each other a voice memo after everything we did, anything we thought of, and like it just brings your brain to say things that like you might not write in your notes. Even if we don't necessarily need input from the other person. Yeah, we literally just say, every time we end a voice memo, we say, <laughs> no need to answer this, but I'm just letting you know. It just helps to like, sometimes it can help to like speak, because sometimes I feel like I'm recording a voice note for you mm -hmm. and as I'm as I'm talking I'm like sorting out the problem for myself yeah but especially because we both go to the barn and have our barn time by ourselves for the most part it's nice to afterwards be like here's everything I did and like just tell someone so afterwards sometimes I'll be like oh I noticed this little thing like I don't know what that could be and Caitlin will be like oh well didn't you say a few days ago he did this and that kind of brings it back to my attention and I'm like, oh yeah, maybe that is why something is different that day. And I think another thing, and this is something that's coming to my brain. So last, when was it? June or July that I came out to your old barn. We went for a little trail ride and then we kind of was, we're just riding in the arena and we were walking around and just talking. And that brought me back so much to when I was like a kid and a teenager and going mm -hmm. to the barn was like my social time. And most of my friends were horsey and like you know my friends would come pick me up and we would go out and we would ride our horses together and it really kind of made me think about the fact that while i've been an adult most of my riding like natalie just said happens on my own and it's as much as i love and get into the training and making training plans and all that stuff that can also be quite isolating so being able to even though we're not at the same barn um <laughs> Even though we're not at the same barn, being able to, you know, have calls or most of the time it's sending each other voice notes can really help to make writing feel more like a social thing again, mm -hmm. like it was when I was a kid because I grew up in Pony Club and then when I was 10, we moved to a boarding barn and I started riding with a new coach, but there were a lot of girls around my age. At my current farm, I absolutely love it. It's a very kind of smaller private farm and I don't have a lot of people to ride with all the time. It's really nice to have that kind of support network because it makes riding feel more like a fun social thing rather than something that feels like it can feel like a chore. And you kind of end sense. up like isolating yourself when you're doing everything by yourself because you don't want people to judge you. Like I find now when I'm 
riding or doing anything with my horse and people are around, I'm a little like, uh, like I hope they don't think anything. Sometimes it just feels isolating when you're by yourself, but then when we get to sending messages to each other, I'm like, okay, yeah, like she relates to this, like nothing I'm doing is like bad and whatever, and you would tell me. So yeah. just like, I would be honest with her and that's kind of the type of people I feel like you need to surround yourself with in this industry because I feel like it's so easy to take a wrong turn and end up kind of doing wrong by your horse or yourself. And it's really interesting. I had a video go, it went viral for me, at least in terms, I've had a few videos like kind of pop off, but in terms of like videos where I make just like have a, have a discussion, normally those don't get too many views, but this one was like responding to a video that this girl had made and she was basically like shitting on horse girls and talking about how they're all biatches and all this stuff and I kind of made a response to that and I talked about a lot of different things and one of the things that I brought up was the fact that there's a lot of neurodivergency in the horse world and it's been really interesting looking at the comments on that video because there's like two different camps. There's the, oh my God, this response made me feel so seen. I was really hurt by the video that you stitched and blah, blah, blah. So this made me feel really seen and thank you. And then there's the kind of other side of things where people are responding and saying, yeah, well, horse, horse girls are bitches. They're the meanest people you'll ever meet. And I think there's that stereotype out there. There's going to be bad eggs in every sport. Yeah. Like I have friends who are in other sports and they had the same issues that I do. But for some reason, horse girls get this bad rap. I think because the world has this vision in their head of like, you know, the spoiled daddy's money showing, you know, all 12 weeks at WEF with a groom and that kind of thing, which there's nothing wrong with that at all. I think we, if we all had the money, that's what we would be doing. But basically, I think it's a shame that there's those stereotypes because it kind of can disavow the value of strong friendships and like-minded friendships in the horse world. <laughs> that was yeah. the end of my point. It's hard because people are going to judge you no matter what, whether they're in this sport or not. Especially on social media. And I think for me, that's one of the value of our friendship. Yeah. Is because we're both, I don't want to say we're social media people, but you know, we both we have, share everything. We share there. everything. And you know, we have small but decent followings. Like Natalie's got almost 11,000 followers on Instagram. I've got 10,000 followers on TikTok, however many on Instagram. Even having a small audience like that, there can be a lot of judgment and I think having someone who is in a similar space can help you like laugh off the negative comments and also to not feel stupid like I think it's easy for me to feel stupid for doing YouTube and like things like that when it's just something I do for fun and it'd be really easy to like view it as cringy and I'm having someone to, who kind of gets it even though you don't do YouTube this is yeah, this is also your YouTube channel welcome back to my channel <laughs> No, I think that's a fair point, but also like I'll get comments on Instagram or TikTok and stuff and even people that I used to be friends with in high school and I would post stuff about what I was doing outside of school, which was horses. They'd be like, well, I thought horses were for like little girls and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, as you get older, it becomes a different section of your life. And obviously like that's a whole other topic is growing up and trying to balance work and life and horses. Something that we talked about when like when we went on that trail ride, because we had both been riding alone for so long like most of the time like it's not to say we never ride with other people but yeah um, but it's usually like i just end up riding at the same time as someone and we're in the arena at the same exactly time. you're not like making plans to go out and like ride together and go mm -hmm. on a hack or something like that because i mean the, and the thing is is like for me it's been a long time since i've had that kind of experience because well, one i'm like six years older than natalie so it's been a longer time since i've been like in high school and yeah. university mm -hmm. you're gonna be what 22 this year and i turned 28 in january and that was another thing i did not know until <laughs> we were halfway we to kentucky and caitlin goes wait how old are you I thought she was like 24. Anyways, but that's another benefit of the horse world. Like one of my other really close friends in the horse world here locally is in her 40s. It's it's kind of one of those things that horses are the great equalizer, I guess. Yeah. When we went on that trail ride and we were walking around the arena, we were both talking just about how that was something that we missed. When you're a kid and you're into horses, it's not all about I mean, for some people, it's all about the competition, but it turned, it's your social time. You're into horses because you love horses, but also because of 
the the social network that it gives you. In high school, it was very like, you have your group lessons with people. And then as soon as I finished high school, got my horse and suddenly I was all by myself. That in itself was like a scary period because then I had to learn everything and my horse is a problem child. So I had to figure out a lot of his issues. I basically had to do all the research myself and that was kind of like a rebrand of my horsemanship. And I feel like it was nice because this one came along pretty soon after after and bouncing ideas off each other was pretty yeah, even before water. even before you want water <laughs> welcome back that was brief interruption <laughs> to get some water and get a parking ticket <laughs> love laugh hey uh, people uh, how do we move on from that <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just hard to adult and do horses. Yeah, so that's something, something I was gonna said. Yeah, so, so, something I was gonna bring up is like the difference in having horsey friends when you're a kid and a teenager versus when you're because being a horse person as an adult is very different than being a horse person as a kid. When you're a kid, for a lot of people, it's their primary social time. But as an adult, it becomes such a valuable source of not just support and like social interaction, but also information. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, especially ones who are neurodivergent, tend to go into little research modes and research rabbit holes. Things we've and, experienced and gone through with our horses. And that can be really valuable because sometimes like vets are an incredible source of knowledge, but at the same time, you know your own horse. And I think having someone to be able to say like, yeah, you know your horse better than anyone. You can advocate for them and say, maybe that's not the best thing, or maybe what about this thing that I heard? Yeah. And it, gives you a little bit more like, yeah, confidence and support to be able to do that. Yeah, especially because both of us tend to see random things on the internet and then we're like, wait, is this an option like for you or for me or whatever? Yeah. And like an example of that right now is I've done like every which type of injection and that's controversial and whatever. I've done a bunch of them and at this point I've come to the conclusion that I just don't want to try that this year again. It's helped, it's done whatever it can do, but I at this point for my horse, it's not really right. And something that Caitlin's looked into a lot and I've started to look into a lot is like different ways of getting your horse sound without having to do that and just trying to strengthen their core and their hind end and everything without that. So to look into like, she's obviously had different body workers. I've had different body workers. So when we can come together and kind of be like, okay, well maybe this would work better for him because of X, Y, Z. It's kind of nice to not have to do all of that trial and error on your own you can kind of just ask someone yeah in that sense it's nice and i feel like it's needed to have people that have gone through things even if it's slightly different it gives you someone to go out and do fun things with like go to kentucky or go ride a horse simulator <laughs> which i'm really excited for and yeah. that's probably soon so probably a good time to wrap this yep video. Wrap this hopefully shit you got, up. Hopefully you got some footage. <laughs> hopefully it was $90 worth. <laughs> Be kind you to your local bylaw officers. That They're is true. just doing their job. That is true. I was very nice when I snatched the ticket out of his hand. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. live, love, laugh. Thank you for coming to our channel. And I will say <laughs> that this one will start featuring more regularly in videos soon. Hope you enjoyed. Hope that you resonated with this conversation. I want to start doing more like chatty Basically, we're videos starting a podcast. Other... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I tell Caitlin all the time that we it would send... be a really good idea for us to do that. And she's just not convinced. Mostly no. because she'd have to be the one editing it. Exactly. And also, but... no one needs that. And we already have our I podcast do. that we send to each other. So that that is our podcast. And we should just take all those discussion. and combine them. End of discussion. <laughs> Like and comment if no. you would like that. It's not <laughs> happening. It's not happening. Yeah. Everybody and their freaking mother has a podcast. That's what we need one. Nope. 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 One day. Oh my god. Our first, our first disagreement. Oh shit. <laughs> Caught on camera. There's your clickbait. Anyways. <laughs> we argued? Question mark? Look. All <laughs> just, just go back to the, the clip where you're going like this to me. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, Sorry. hope that you enjoyed. Hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. The next video is going to be us going and trying the- And riding something we don't need. <laughs> so anyways, 
That I get to be, ride in Keelan's saddle for an hour. <laughs> That'll be uh, the next video. And then after that, who knows? When she's back from her little breakity break. Oh my gosh, there's things we have planned. I almost said a bad word, but I stopped myself because this is a family channel. We're nearly at the end of this clip. So I'm going to bid you adieu. See you next time. Follow this one at Bozyquine on Instagram and- Or don't. TikTok. <laughs> and we will so we will see you in the next one because she's going to be in it. Bye from Dangley. See you next time. Where the f to start from here? That is the question. I just got an injury. What did he do? You. Oh, what did I do? Did I else <laughs> <laughs> Oh We wait. cried during this video. <laughs> we argued. I sobbed. <laughs> the importance of having light. <laughs> Where's he from?